subscribe is my good so all right uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15 this is Moses speaking the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto me so a man like Moses unto him you shall hearken verse 18 I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him that's the Lord as he's quoting and this for the Jews as this is their scripture their authoritative scripture it is the primary source document of Judaism all Jews look to the Torah first for answers and if they can't find it in the Torah that's when they branch off to the, the Midrash the Mishnah Talmud Babylonian over in Jerusalem Talmuds um, but uh, rabbis etc there's a, a chain of authority by which to go down if the, any of the previous ones do not have the answers for you one of the questions is who will be this man like Moses and as the learning of the Jews goes he will uh, be patterned after the example of Moses that's how he will be like Moses it's because what Moses did how he was born raised lived his life and with the Exodus this future Messiah Christ man like Moses is to become and so the prophet Jeremiah further expands on what he will do in referring um, to the latter days verse 5 of Jeremiah 23 behold the days come saith the Lord that I will raise unto David that's King David a righteous branch and the king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth this is the descendant of King David mother and father descended to be the rightful heir to restore the kingdom of David and so yeah Jesus doesn't qualify for this does he in his days Judah shall be saved Jesus is not the guy and Israel shall dwell safely Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Moses. But the Lord liveth which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I have driven them. And they shall dwell in their own land the future man like Moses this is the Christ to whom the Jews are looking for Jesus did not fulfill it he wasn't the descendant of King David he didn't save the Jews and many other problems 
such as no signs that were prophesied by Isaiah. And, and so, what about Joseph Smith? Did he have anything to say about this? Why, yes, yes he did, Travis. Yes he did. Verse 15 of section 103 of the Doctrine and Covenants. Was I? Section 103, verses 15 and 16, 17, 18. Behold, I say unto you, the redemption of Zion. Latter days, this is Joseph Smith talking, must needs come by power. Therefore, I will raise up unto my people. A man who shall lead them, my people, like as Moses led the children of Israel. For ye are the children of Israel and of the seed of Abraham, and ye must needs be led out of bondage by power and with a stretched out arm. And as your fathers were led at first, even so shall the redemption of Zion be. Joseph clearly taught that our Jesus is a Mormon, born and raised, <clears throat> just like the Jews believed, except that Joseph said he was going to be through the Mormons. And I know that's shocking. There's probably some of you who have already abandoned me long ago when I first brought this out. It's all fun and games when you're trashing the church, Travis, but stay away from the Constantine created God. <laughs> it's okay to trash the Mormon God, but not the, the fake supernatural Constantine God. So the Book of Mormon, here's where all ex-Mormons do not understand why what was meant, the majority of it was written by Sidney Rigdon, Senior had to rewrite the 116 pages that Junior had destroyed, and uh, that's why it's got dozens of contemporary books wording within it. 1769 King James Version of the Bible, errors and all, and what I've been trying to talk about, the code. <coughs> and so yeah, Mormons, they're like, no, nah, no, you're wrong, Travis. Book of Mormon is a real history of the ancient indigenous people, and it is as is, and the supernatural Jesus of Mormons, who has a physical body, will magically come from outer space, but where? Was it Missouri? Or does Jesus respond to the orders of the living prophet? Are you sure you want to go down that path? First Nephi chapter 1 verse 2. Yea, I make a record in the language of my father, which consists of the learning of the Jews. And so right now we understand why Joseph Smith was saying that our Jesus, the Mormon Jesus of Joseph Smith, is a future Mormon. He doesn't have supernatural powers, he's mortal. many knuckleheads who think, oh, Jesus has supernatural power. This Mormon has supernatural powers. Oh, yeah? And then they act like 
Satan, when he confronts Jesus on his 40-day fast, remember that? He tempts Jesus. Well, you're the Son of God. Jump! Angels will save you. And you get dumbasses like that who want to be Lucifer. And so, the first character of the Book of Mormon is Nephi. He's the one who appeared to Joseph Smith. It's Brigham Young who made it change to Moroni. Joseph always called him Nephi. There's a reason why, and this is why. He is the prototype, the type and shadow, the prophecy of the Mormon Moses. And so he's born in the covenant, goodly parents, and uh, he sees affliction in his days, highly favored of the Lord, great knowledge of the goodness and the temple initiatories, because that's what mysteries originally meant in Greek. A mysterion is one who is going on, going into the temple to take out or go through, you know, there are some who get technical. <laughs> you get your endowments, you receive your endowments, whatever. You are washed and anointed. And sure enough, to anoint is to christen, and to be anointed is to be a Christ. And yes, that's what a king is. A king is a Christ. So it's not so complicated after all, is it? Constantine decided to ban all previous kings, except for him, to be Christ's. As he created the one and only, who's supernatural, but who can be physical if he wants to be, but he's not really physical, he's got this supernatural substance. It's not really a substance, because substance is physical. <laughs> and we'll make sure to make that error in translation to English in the King James Version of Hebrews 11.1. 1. <laughs> so, yeah. What does Nephi do? Because none of this is history. This is prophecy about the Mormon Moses now. And so he's born uh, in uh, the first year of the reign of King Zedekiah, which is not the reign of King Zedekiah. This is not a real history. It uses history as the backdrop for the code. And Lehi has his dream. He sees revelation sign in the heavens from chapter 12 and chapter 19. But wait, that's a seven year period of time. So he can't be born in 2017 and then be king in 2024? No, something's wrong the latter days that's well. so that's not his actual birth actual birth is a different story and so uh, what you have is that after Lehi dwelt in a tent Nephi then starts off and uh, verse 16 of chapter 2 of 1st Nephi uh, and it came to pass, I, Nephi, being exceedingly young. Nevertheless, being large in stature, having great desires to know how to translate the book of Abraham. Because <laughs> my mom said that I... <laughs> mom was a disbeliever. 
She says, my dad was a spiritual man, or not a spiritual man, what was a visionary man. <clears throat> and so Sam, which is Shem, which is the name, is his brother who believes him. Which is interesting, because that's the name of, of uh, son Amun. Sun at noonday, that even Lehi sees. And you see that Nephi is of low stature. Laman is the birthright, birth, uh, birthright blessing son who is to receive the, the leadership of the family tribe. And this, again, is prophecy. He is born and raised Mormon, but he's not a prophet. Because that's how the church is led, by prophets. And there's even a ranking that the oldest prophet, oldest ranked prophet, who's the president of the Quorum of the Twelve, becomes the successor. And so Laman, he's the successor. He's the president of the Quorum of the Twelve. It's his right to rule when President Monson dies. You can fill in any of them if you want, but we're talking about the latter days. Monson was dying in the first year of the reign of King Zedekiah. Next year, Lehi dies. Nelson takes over. Tries to have Nephi assassinated. <coughs> Obviously the timing is not accurate to scale. <laughs> That's what stories are for, is to be symbols. And so that's what you're looking for. the false Christ and false prophet. They're prophesied. Are you looking for them? Do you have the right religion? Are you using the Book of Mormon as your iron rod to get to the tree of life? Or are you wandering in the midst of apologetic darkness Mist of cloud, mist of darkness, yeah. To the great and spacious Salt Lake Temple with the inverted pentagram of the great and abominable church. It's all right here in the Book of Mormon for you. And Nephi talks about from his dream, speaking with an angel who says, Hey, yeah, this guy named John, he's going to write all about this. Refer to his book. <clears throat> the two go hand in hand, and ha hand in hand. And so, what is it about Nephi that Laman can't perform? Well, Nephi can do anything, because he tells us, "Surely the Lord God will do nothing save He shall reveal it." This or no, that's the wrong one. Same as verse seven. I will go and do what the Lord commands, for I know that he giveth no commandment unto the children of men, save he shall prepare a way for them. Uh, let's see. Yeah, here it is. Chapter 3, verse 7. I will go and do the things which the Lord hath commanded, for I know that the Lord giveth no commandments unto the children of men, save he shall prepare a way for them, that they may accomplish the thing which he commandeth them. And so, if you remember the Gospels story, Jesus is always telling people, I'm only doing that which my Father has commanded me. Nephi is the Jesus character, the man like Moses, the Mormon. He's the one who's actually obedient to the Spirit. Whereas Laman, nope, didn't even bother. It was his right to rule and he went with his own judgments. And 
his judgments were Luciferian. Wanted to hold people in bondage, to obey him, to serve him, to make him prosperous. And uh, wanted to murder anybody who dared to oppose and molest and make afraid. And then you see examples of how Nephi follows the Spirit, fulfills things. You see how uh, the plates of brass are obtained. And the Book of Mormon says that, that the fulfillment of Ezekiel 37 will be performed in the latter days, as well as the brass plates, which is exactly described as Ezekiel 37 describes it. so you get an idea that he's a translator, knows Egyptian, knows Hebrew, because the two languages in the Book of Mormon, Hebrew and Egyptian. And so these are the things you look for when you're studying and searching for the latter-day Messiah. And the question is, why aren't you? you know? And because you didn't even know to know. And so uh, this is just a sampling for you. Uh, and he has to leave when uh, Lehi dies. And so what does he do when he gets to the promised land? So there's an exodus. Remember I did the pattern earlier today. Exodus pattern, and I've done other videos talking about the Mormon Moses, but he builds the temple, the temple of Solomon. Now, yes, Joseph Smith Sr. and Hiram were in the York Rites masonry with the Knights Templar, and that does play a part. But this is prophecy for the latter-day Mormon, like Moses, for the Exodus, that there will be a temple built. So it's not the Salt Lake Temple. And uh, Nephi, or, uh, Nephi, uh, Joseph said it needed to be built as a mountain city along with New Jerusalem in Southern Illinois. And that's coincidentally where X marks the spot between the first day of darkness in 2017 and the third day of darkness in 2024 across in Southern Illinois. And they cross over Independence, Adam on Diamond in 2017 and then over uh, the farm and Kirtland, Ohio, the first temple in 2024 to cross in Southern Illinois. That's also uh, Knights Templar stuff too, as I've been telling you. And so, uh, yeah, when you get to third Nephi, Nephi, son of Nephi. Ta-da! Joseph, son of Joseph, is the restoring Messiah of the latter days who is murdered and his kingdom needs to be restored because it was usurped and by the great and abominable church and Mr. Great and Abominable himself so there you have it a, uh, how to use the Book of Mormon for the latter days and it's getting a little bit late to start this for you so I sort of have to give you the answers now as uh, you are now in a position where Alma chapter 32 uh, before he starts talking about how faith works to get to knowledge seed to get to fruit he says that uh, you know it's better that you would have believed in the beginning rather than being compelled to believe. 
uh, because once you are given the answers, you're at a higher level of responsibility. That if you uh, reject it, you're in a worse fate than if you just didn't believe from the beginning. So yeah. Sorry guys, you are now under that bondage. You are now forced to know. You are compelled. <laughs> the power of the Book of Mormon compels ye. <laughs> Catholic apocalyptic movies are awesome. <laughs> the cross that, that burns demons and holy water that melts them. <laughs> I'm melting! Ding dong, the witch is dead, the wicked witch is dead. <laughs>